When Tesla opened FSD beta to the first round of testers, it included a new feature called auto high beams. Now, auto high beams are probably the most universally hated feature available on Teslas today. And the reasoning for that is they just never worked properly. And I know when I would try to use them, they would always be flashing people for no reason, or they would just fail to turn off when another car was driving by. So now that the feature has been out for over a year, I think it's worth taking another look. So I've actually been doing a lot of night driving over the past week with auto high beams enabled, and the results actually surprised me a little bit. So as soon as the sun goes down, we will go out and do our own test drive, and I'll let you be the judge. So I think some of the apprehension of using the auto high beams feature uh, is actually a result from not understanding how the system works. Um, and I'll admit, I was definitely one of those people. Um, once I started playing with it, it actually started to make a lot of sense. So I wanna just go into it real quickly before we go on the drive. So um, in our controls, we have the auto high beams button, which when it's blue, it's enabled. And um, that's just the feature itself is enabled. What determines if the actual high, auto high beam feature is on, on being different than enabled, is this um, this icon right here. I know it is dark, so I really hope you guys can see it, but right below my low beam icon, we have the auto high beam icon, and it's grayed out. And um, when that icon is present, that means that the feature is on and you're, you're basically telling the car it is free to turn on the high beams um, as it deems necessary. Now, I have tested it on the highway and the interstate and it doesn't turn on um, or doesn't flash cars and all this stuff. It doesn't turn on because it, I think it knows. But if you're worried about it, you can um, turn the feature off by just pressing forward on your left stock and so you can see the gray icon went away but the auto high beam feature is still enabled now something to know is that when we get into the car um, the it, it, it the feature turns itself back on so it'll be in this in this state and I'm just toggling this on and off um, by pushing forward on my left stock and you can see my high beams are not actually coming on so I'm not actually flashing anyone or anything just by doing that so um, something that's that's really nice about that is if I'm in an area where I'm like I definitely do not want my high beams to come on I can simply just push forward on my stock to turn it off and then I don't have to worry about the high beams coming on but then if I'm driving on a backcountry road where there's no lights and I want the auto high beam feature I can just simply push forward on my stock to get it to work so hopefully that makes sense uh, let's go ahead and do the drive all right so I'm driving on a country road now um, and hopefully we will run into a number of different cars um, but you can see our high beam auto high beam feature is enabled and it is currently on um, so we'll just drive around and see what happens so it just turned off um, I don't really have an, a, an explanation for that. I have noticed on some roads it tends to get confused, possibly by cones or other things that are reflecting, um, and it is starts, does start just flashing on and off. So it's all the cars up ahead, even though they're a ways in the distance and it immediately turned them off. It was very responsive. And it, it, it is usually a little bit delayed in when it turns back on. Um, it's probably for the, the cases like now where another car just came over the hill. So it stayed off that whole time, which is what we want. And it took a couple seconds, but then it turned back on. see a car is about to come over the hill so we'll see if it turns off so it actually turned off before we went over the hill so that was good flashing on and off on the 
this road even though there are no cars. say I am actually kind of surprised with how much it's been flashing because um, like I said in the beginning I've been using this I don't want it on right now I've been using this um, for the past week or so and I've had really no problems with it um, it was performing quite quite well except for the occasional flickering on and off when it didn't need to be on in general but now it just seems like it's acting up a little bit. Now, there's a car in front of me, so I'm going to push forward just to turn on the feature. And you'll notice I didn't flash him, because it doesn't work like that. So it turned off promptly there. Now this is one spot where it fails. Um, the high beams were on even though this guy was pulling up to the intersection next to me. And it should have should have sensed that from the side cameras and immediately turned off, but it didn't. So, you know, we can do this all night long. Um, but we pretty much get the same results. Um, overall, I would say, in terms of turning off when it sees a vehicle, it does a very good job when you're on a road like this and the vehicle's sh straight uh, coming towards you. We also didn't seem to have a chance to be um, really behind many vehicles, but it does turn off for them, um, at least from what I've seen from this past week. Now, in terms of just when it's just you on a road like this, um, that seems to be an, an area where Tesla needs to continue to work on the feature because it just keeps turning it on and off and on and off and on and off for no reason. So it definitely is an improvement from you know what it's been for a long time because at least we're not flashing people now. We're just you know flashing on empty roads for no reason. Um, and again, the other the other issue is just when it's in that intersection, it seems to be ignoring the side um, side lanes, which you know they still will um, see some of the light, so it should turn off um, just for politeness. And we're not going to be testing on the interstate. Um, like I said, it does work well on the interstate, but because people seem to have a misunderstanding of how the system works, um, the best recommendation I can give if you want to use this feature is that if you're worried about it, when you're on the interstate or you're on the highway, 
just simply disable the feature by pushing forward on the left stock like I just did and then when you're ready to use it again just push forward again So hopefully I've answered the question proposed in the title of this video. Has Tesla finally fixed their most annoying feature? Eh, you know, you be the judge. It's definitely better, um, but I would say it's still not ready for prime time. Um, it's still just too sporadic and kind of finicky. So maybe another year is all that'll take.